Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Kid City. This is... I have lost the count of what week this is that we have been doing this, but it's uh, very close to about 10 months, I think. So, let's just jump right into this passage. This week, we are not going to be reading the entire passage, although we are getting this from Acts 6, verse 8, to all of chapter 7. So because it's such a long passage, I'm just going to summarize it up for you and talk about it with you. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we'll learn a lot from this story about Stephen. And so last week, if you remember, we learned about how the disciples appointed men over parts of the administration of the church because the disciples wanted to be more focused on preaching and teaching and they needed others to delegate to the other day-to-day -day aspects of the church. And so Stephen was one of these people, one of these deacons that were appointed. And so Stephen was doing that, and then he also began to preach and do miracles among the people. And as you might remember, and as we've seen many times before, usually... When we talk about the disciples or others preaching the gospel and doing miracles, the religious leaders don't love that normally. It, the same thing happened to Jesus. The Pharisees didn't like Jesus because of his preaching and his teaching and his doing miracles. And so, sure enough, the same thing happens to Stephen. And so the religious leaders became upset with him and eventually arrested him, but kind of under unfair circumstances because the religious leaders started spreading rumors about Stephen that Stephen was lying about what he was teaching and was spreading lies about Jesus. But those were just rumors and that Stephen was actually teaching the truth. But... Because of those rumors, Stephen was arrested, and so he was sent before the authorities, kind of like if you've ever seen in court where you have to go before a judge to make your case. That's what Stephen had to do. And so the judge or the authorities who were questioning him asked if he was spreading lies or if he was telling the truth. And you'd think that would be a pretty easy answer. And it was, but instead, Stephen began to defend and to show his devotion to God by telling the story of how God worked through his people to bring Jesus into the world. And so he does this really interesting thing of balancing what his accusers said versus what the Bible says. And so we see in this passage that his accusers said that Stephen taught against the Jews. But in this sermon, Stephen told, Stephen talked about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and pointed out that the Jews were God's nation. And his accusers said that he was blaspheming Moses. Blaspheming, blaspheming just means talking against or lying about. And Stephen outlined how the law was handed down through Moses and that God told Moses that a prophet, Jesus, would be sent from among the Jews. Instead of, but instead of accepting this, God's people had rejected both Moses and God. And finally, his accusers said that Stephen taught against the temple, which was kind of like the church at the time. But Stephen reminded them that before Solomon built the temple, there was the tabernacle and that God could never be contained in a house made with human hands. And all of these are references to the Old Testament. And so Stephen tells this entire story of the Old Testament about how each part was used to bring Christ into the world. And the religious authorities we're not very happy with this. We can read in Acts 7, verse 54, 
it says that in fact, when they heard these things, they were enraged, which means they were really angry. And they ground their teeth at him. But he, Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And since the religious authorities were so angry, they decided to do something called stoning. And the passage says, that as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. And so in that story, Stephen becomes the first martyr of the church. And a martyr is someone who chooses to die instead of giving up their belief. So in this story, Stephen was given the choice to either say that he was making everything up or to stand on the truth. And if he would have lied and said that what he was saying wasn't true and everything like that, maybe he would have lived. But he showed his devotion to God and his faith through telling the truth no matter the consequences. And in this case, the consequence was death. So people like Stephen and other martyrs can make us praise God for their lives, for their witness that they would rather die. And it can also be used to make us consider our own lives. And if we were put in that situation, would our faith be strong enough for that? And I think that's something that we all should consider, whether we would have the courage and conviction that Stephen did. So let's pray for that today. God, we thank you for the gift that you have given us of the witness of Stephen and of the other martyrs in the church. Um, we thank you for the proclamation that your word and that your gospel is more important than our even than even our lives. So we thank you for the example and we thank you for the conviction you have on our lives uh, that you would continue to grow that and give us courage and boldness as we proclaim you and your word. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, that is it for Kid City today and I will see you guys again next week.